What is the point of having alopecia if you can't match your blue wig to your new book? I've been filming videos for booksellers today and I thought I would cosplay kinda as my own book and making the videos for these booksellers, which are for Halloween, got me thinking, Halloween is soon <laughs> and I haven't done a scary books recommendations video and I tend to do these every year. So there are plenty of videos on this channel where I've recommended scary books before. If you just search YouTube for my name and scary books or Halloween, then lots of things will come up. But today I thought I would sit down and recommend some haunting books that I have read. I think mostly over the past year so that I'm not repeating myself too much from previous videos. Um, some of these are ghostly, some of them are touching on witchcraft and aren't particularly scary, but most of them are creepy, if not scary, and I'll tell you which genre each book falls into as we go on. And then I'm also gonna show you the bigger pile of books that I am hoping to read some from the rest of this month so that I can get my own creepy fill. But as I mentioned at the very beginning of the video, my new book is now out. It's called The Sister Who Ate Her Brothers and it is great for Halloween, if I do say so myself. It is a collection of gruesome fairy tales from around the world, retold by me, illustrated by Adam D'Souza. He's done black and white illustrations for the borders of every page and then also amazing full page colour plates as well. It's out in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, various other places. It's coming out in North and South America on the 23rd of November. So you'll have to have a belated Halloween or you can buy a copy to have shipped across to you now because international shipping is available and it is out here now. Links will be in the description box down below. If you would like to go check that out, including a video where I talk about the book in more detail, if that's something that um, you would like to find out more about. Um, it's lovely that it's out in the world now. It's had some very nice feedback. Neil Gaiman reviewed it this week, which was something that warmed my heart very much. In fact, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm giving off Coraline vibes today, so I'm gonna say that I'm doing that in his honor. All right, let us dive into scary, creepy books I would recommend, and then books that are on my TBR. I will list them in the description box down below. We've got, I haven't counted, but probably about 30 books here, so I should probably just get on with it. So one of my favorite books from last year was Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. This is also being made into a film soon with Mashallah Ali. So if you would like to get ahead of the game and read this book before it hits the cinema, I would recommend it. It's about a family who go on holiday, but then there's a power outage and they don't really know what's going on in the wider context of the world. Something big may have happened, or it may just be a power outage in their little house, but maybe not. It's really kind of disturbing. Um, and I would recommend it if you enjoyed the film Us, giving off similar vibes. Then very recently, I read two books, so I'll mention them really quickly because I've spoken about them in uh, videos over the past couple of weeks. This is Mrs. March by Virginia Vito. I always want to say Katrina Ward because that is who blurbed it. And I do have a book by her on this stack as well. This falls into the category of unsettling and it's about a wife who's very suspicious of her husband, who's an author and who has potentially based a not very nice character in his new book on her. She's investigating him, not that he seems to realize and he is gaslighting her into forgetting what's gone on in her life and therefore she doesn't really know who to trust. It's really, as I said, something that gets under your skin. Uh, then I also recently read The Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith, which is an old school thriller set in the 1950s, written in the 1950s too, um, about a man who is asked to go and bring home a, a rich boy who's fled to Europe. His parents want him to come home. They send Tom Ripley to bring him back. But Tom's got other ideas. He would quite like to um, be part of Richard's life, again, in a way that is not entirely pleasant. Enjoyed that one. If I'm going to recommend a thriller, I'd recommend The Red Room by Nikki French. This is a standalone about a psychologist called Kit Quinn, who is called to a police station because they're suspicious of a man who's been hanging out around a school for no reason. She thinks they're goading him and she says, you shouldn't be keeping this man here. You might not like him, but he hasn't done anything. It escalates. This man then attacks Kit. She ends up with a facial disfigurement and then she's going back to work and she ends up trying to solve a crime which may be potentially 
linked. Um, I really like it for its representation of disfigurement with our protagonist and I just think that the crime in it is so so good. If you're a fan of Free Decline then you'll love this because this is a book they wrote before that and I really think that Kit is the blueprint for Frida so I recommend. Then this book. This I love for several reasons. One, it's set in Newcastle and I am from Sunderland, which is right next door to Newcastle. And I listened to the audiobook of this, which is narrated by the author and it is therefore in Geordie, which is just delightful. Made me feel like I was back at home, except not really because <laughs> horrible things happen in this book. I would recommend this for fans of the film Promising Young Woman because it is about a woman called Irina who pulls men off the street and says she's going to photograph them but it's really about revenge against the patriarchy um, and it is quite messed up and I really enjoyed it. This one I would recommend if you enjoyed Mrs. March, if you happen to have read that already. Um, this is Atesha Moshveg's latest book called Death in Her Hands. Someone may have died but then again, someone might not have died. This is about a woman who goes for a walk in the woods and she finds a post-it note that says, this is Magda's body. I did not kill her, but there's no body there. So she decides she's going to investigate this murder. But did she actually have something to do with it herself? It's great. If you would like something wholesome for Halloween, might I recommend Witch Boy by Molly Knox Ossetag. This is a graphic novel. Uh, let me show you the colour palette. It looks like this. This is about a society where girls grow up to be witches and boys grow up to be shapeshifters and there's no crossover, nothing in between, except this boy here who really wants to be a witch. It's lovely. I read it, curled up one evening and just thought it was an absolute joy. Then if you would prefer to read some creepy short stories, I recommend these four books. This is Speak Gigantula by Renaissance Okaji, where ghosts haunt the underground and waitresses are abducted by aliens. If you fancy some Japanese ghost stories, this is Japanese ghost stories, pile of Katie O'Hearn. If you would like some creepy Korean fiction, this is Flowers of Mold, which is also about women who are getting their revenge on men who have wronged them. And then this is a limited edition pamphlet that Kirstie Logan has put together and it's uh, more into the wholesome creepy. Is that a thing? Wholesome creepy? Just a bit weird and delightful. Um, and it has all of these Rizzo prints in which uh, are absolutely stunning. So these are pieces of flash fiction and they are illustrated by Maria Stoyan. Um, it's called The House of Former Lovers and you can get it on Kirstie's website. I'll link it in the description box down below. So those are the more recent creepy books that I have read. Please don't fall. Is that going? That's going to fall. Hang on. Let me rescue this pile of books. There we go. All right. And now... We have a pile of books that I am going to be choosing from when it comes to my creepy reads this year and there are lots of them so let's whiz through. This is Come Let Us Sing Anyway by, Le I think I said that weird, this is Come Let Us Sing Anyway by Leonie Ross. This is a short story collection. I also have her most recent novel on my shelf but this one has been sitting there for longer and it does have a story about headless schoolgirls which uh, sounds interesting. It says that these range from psychological drama, magical realism, horror, and erotica. Then we have Itza, which is a book that Storygraph recommended to me. And I am gonna be doing a video soon where different people recommend books to me or algorithms recommend books to me. So this is by Rios de la Luz. And it says that it's her debut novel where it examines the lives of a small family of water witches living near the US-Mexican border. As I mentioned, Katrina Ward is on this list too. And this is a book I've heard so many people talk about. It's called The House on Needless Street. The blurb really doesn't give anything away. This is a thriller. I've heard people say that it's quite confusing and strange, but I'm kind of here for confusing and strange. So this is quite hyped. I'm going to check it out see if it's worth the hype. This is The Youngest Doll by Rosario Ferre, who is a Puerto Rican author. This is a collection of short stories. It says that they are as radiant as they are disturbing. I mean, cool. I'm not sure that I need to know any more. This is a short story collection by Venetia Blackburn called How to Wrestle a Girl. And I don't know if all of the short stories in here are creepy, but one of them is about a society where people cut off loose pieces of skin and sell them for food processing. And that sounds quite scary. And speaking of creepy short stories, if um, you would like to check out one of my books for Grown Ups, which is quite creepy, it's called The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night. And the first story in that collection is about a world where people buy animal hearts online to put inside their own bodies, which is, you know, a little bit disturbing. 
Next on my list, we also have another book that is called The Dolls. Was this one called The Dolls? Oh, sorry, The Youngest Doll and The Dolls. I'm just a sucker for the word doll in the title, I think. This is by Ursula Scavinius, and this is translated from the Danish by Jennifer Russell. This is also a collection of short stories. It says the characters are plagued by unexplained illnesses and oblique human-made disasters and environmental losses. Cheerful. This collection of short stories is called Dead Relatives by Lucy McKnight Hardy. I definitely have more creepy short story collections than I do horror novels because that's just what I prefer. This is a collection of stories that explores motherhood tensions, unusual traditions and metamorphosis, the fragile body and weird family dynamics. This is Bluebeard's First Wife by Ha Song Nan, which is translated from the Korean by Janet Hong. Um, I showed her other book here somewhere, which was Flowers of Mould, um, which was the collection of stories about women taking revenge on, on men. This one says it's about disasters, accidents, and deaths. This is about a woman who spends a night with a fiance and his friends and overhears a terrible secret. It's about a man who gets increasingly annoyed by a family who live in the flat above him, who then have horrible things happen to them and his wife is suspicious that maybe he's done something to them and lots of other things besides. This is a novel called Tell Me I'm Worthless, which is coming out this month. This is about a group of friends who experienced something horrible when they were younger, and then one of them is revisiting that. It has queer representation, specifically trans representation in here as well, and is written by a trans author. And I'm super excited to get to this. It's a thriller high up on my TBR. A Ghost in the Throat by Dorina Griffa is one that's been sitting on my shelf for about a year now. So I would like to get to it this year if possible and the end of the year is coming. It's about a woman who's obsessed with a poem and it's about the writing of that poem, which is historical and her examining the poem in the future. I think it's quite gothic and dark. Then we've got The River Within by Karen Powell. And this is a mystery set around a river where I believe somebody drowned. Yes, it's about a mysterious death. Did he jump or was it just an accident? It's about class and the people who live in the town near the river and how they may or may not be involved in that death. Then we've got two books by Patricia Highsmith after reading The Talented Mr. Ripley. I want to read more of her stuff um, and I would like to read more in the Ripley series, but I would like to read some standalones first. So this is Deep Water, which is about a loveless marriage and the woman is very openly having affairs and then the person she's currently having an affair with dies and her husband says that he did it, but is that true? Then this is Strangers on a Train and I have not seen the film version of this, so I'm really excited that I'm going into it not knowing anything about it the same way I did with The Talented Mr. Ripley. I believe that this is about two people who meet on a train and I think that they have people in their lives they would like to get rid of and they agree to murder the person for each other so that no one will suspect them because they don't know each other at all so there's no reason for for either of them to be investigated for those particular murders that sounds really interesting then a couple more short story collections um so three actually i haven't read any john burnside in ages and if you want a truly horrific book for halloween read the dumb house i mean it's awful, like in, in a great way, like it's just horrific. Um, and I haven't read his short stories actually. I've read lots of his novels, but not his short stories and I've read his poetry too. This is called Some, Something Like Happy. A woman bearing the taste of summer is there one moment and gone the next. A murder is carried out with chilling casualness. A girl tries to escape a dead end future. So I think some of these are gonna be scary. Some of them aren't going to be. This is From the Neck Up by Alia Whiteley, which is a collection of horror science fiction short stories. I also have one of her novels on my TBR, which is called The Loosening Skin, which is where people shed their skin every seven years and I guess can become new people. Um, I don't know if there's a currency to do with identity and skin, but that sounds really interesting. Can't get over how much this cover looks like Amanda Palmer. It always like weirds me out. This is Cursed Bunny by Bora Chung, translated from the Korean by Anton He. This I think is also full of horror stories. It says, his bewildered wife called for help and a group of nurses rushed in and tried to restrain him. The man resisted, shouting something incomprehensible about bunnies. 
sure. And then the last one on my TBR is this one here called My Life in the Bush of Ghosts by Amos Tutalola. And this says that it is about a small boy who wanders into the heart of a fantastical African forest, the dwelling place of innumerable wild, grotesque and terrifying beings where he is captured by ghosts, buried alive and wrapped up in spider webs. Sounds great. So those are the books that I would recommend picking up or I'm thinking about picking up myself. I would love to know what is on your TBR for spooky season if you happen to have one. And as I said, I do have other videos on my channel where I talk about scary books as well. I hope you're having a good week and I will speak to you all very soon. Sending lots of love. Bye.